reports at six o'clock, a tiny baby is abandoned in the freezing cold on Tyneside, and meningitis claims another young life in the region. The present buying is over, but the bargain hunting has begun, we report on the start of the winter sales. And an item for everyone who likes reliving the past, some fascinating film footage of days gone by. Join us at six o'clock. Emmerdale, New Year's Eve at 7 on Channel 3 Northeast. Almost every time you eat, your teeth are attacked by plaque acid. So in theory, the best thing is to brush after every meal and snack. In practice, when that's not possible, you can chew. Because chewing Orbit, or Wrigley's Extra, produces more of your mouth's natural defense saliva which, as your dentist will tell you, helps neutralize plaque acid fast and strengthen teeth against decay throughout the day. So whenever you eat, chew. Okay, I want pastrami on Bavarian rice, sweet pickled tomato. Easy on the Dijon kosher dill. Excuse me, double decaf hazelnut latte, medium roasted Colombian beans, two The new Chrysler Neon, built for the most demanding country in the world. Something cool's happening at Northern Electric, and the prices are melting right across the store. Yes, it's the big Northern Electric winter sale, with incredible savings on all the top brands, like Zanussi, Creda, and JVC. And with our amazing buy now, pay February 1998 deal, this is the coolest time to save. The Northern Electric Winter Sale, now on at every one of our shops and superstores. Don't miss it. Bryant think a home should be individual. Be set apart in lots of space. And be in the best location. So shouldn't you be calling 0500 500 003 and discovering it's the Bryant Ford that really counts? Beryl doesn't look too happy, does she? And you know why that is, it's her birthday and the doormat's a bit light on birthday cards. Actually, what really happened was this. There were plenty of cards. Do you know why? It's me, Mum. Don't forget Gran's birthday. Helen, before you go on holiday, send Gran a card, all right? I know you're broke, Tom, so I've got you a card. You can sign it when you come over, all right? I'd like to order some flowers, please. Don't ask me what women ring round more than red. Maybe they care more. I know one thing, though. When they care on the blower, things happen. Yeah. The flowers are beautiful. And I had a lovely lot of cards. It's good to go. Behave yourself. Your oasis at Oasis Forest Holiday Villages. Call 0990 086 086. For a store full of the biggest brands at fantastic prices from Britain's biggest chain of computer stores, the Big Bite Sale is now on. See press for details. Bar owner, 29, ex football pro. Loves lagers, lasses, and a good hot curry. Seeks a loving relationship with a sophisticated lady. Swaps considered. Doesn't watch EastEnders. Cheers. The Northeast's very own soap, Keyside, starts soon on Channel 3 Northeast. of ITN The News with John Suchet.
Good evening. The family of one of the two British nurses accused of murder in Saudi Arabia said today they had spoken to her on the telephone and she had assured them she was innocent. Lucille McLaughlin's brother John said the last few days had been absolute hell for the family. He said their priority now was to get the very best legal help for her. She and her fellow nurse Deborah Parry face execution if found guilty. Caroline Kerr reports. The strain of the last few days was etched on the faces of Lucille McLaughlin's parents as they faced the cameras in their hometown of Dundee. If found guilty, Lucille could be beheaded. Her brother John spoke of the family's trauma. As you can imagine, the last few days have been absolute hell for my family. We have spoken to Lucy very briefly on the telephone and she has assured us of her innocence. We are obviously worried sick about our situation and are making efforts to secure the very best legal representation for Lucy. John McLaughlin said Lucille was a normal, cheerful girl who'd been dedicated to her career. Lucy lived for nursing and has spent all her working life caring for others. Anyone who knows her knows that she is not capable of hurting anyone. He denied she'd been dismissed from a Dundee teaching hospital for gross misconduct in 1996. Lucille is one of two British women accused of murdering Yvonne Guilford, an Australian nurse working in Dharan. Under Saudi law, legal experts fear they may not get a fair trial. This is the worst situation any Britain's been in for a very long time from a justice point of view. Uh, the Saudi concept of justice and not allowing them to even have a lawyer at their trial means that it's not going to be very good for fine-tuning. Tonight, the Foreign Office said diplomats were planning to visit the two women over the weekend in the hope at least of organising some legal advice for them. Caroline Kerr, ITN. Next, on the early evening news, cold weather payments, the government walks into a row. Remarkable rescue at sea, a yachtsman saves his rival's life. And it's icy outside, but inside the sails are hot. The government announced this afternoon that only a very few areas would qualify for special cold weather payments on a day when icy temperatures gripped much of the country. Labour says Britain's poorest pensioners will have to choose between eating and heating. Our political correspondent Hugh Pym reports. There have been treacherous conditions around the country, both underfoot and on the roads. The AA warning motorists on their way home tonight to beware of icy road surfaces. Despite the latest widespread snowstorms, the cold weather benefit payments, £8.50 a week to certain income support claimants, won't apply throughout the UK. Payments were triggered today in large parts of the Scottish Highlands, in an area around the Scottish border and in a big section of Devon. They qualify because they've had, or are forecast to have, sub-zero temperatures for seven days. But a political row broke out, with Labour claiming many pensioners wouldn't get the cash because they'd failed to claim income support. I think it's a scandal that as the temperature falls, there are over a million pensioners in Britain who are going to be afraid to turn on the heating because although they're entitled to extra help with their heating bills, they're not getting it. I reject uh, Labour's accusations out of hand. This is a Tory scheme. It was not introduced by the Labour Party. It was introduced by this Conservative government to help some of the most vulnerable people in our society. And with temperatures still below freezing, police have warned of the dangers of frozen lakes after a man died in mid-Glamorgan while trying to rescue his dog. Hupim, ITN. International observers today ruled that opposition parties did win the recent local elections in Serbia. Tens of thousands of demonstrators again took to the streets today to protest against President Milosevic's action in cancelling the elections. Ben Ando reports. The people were right with international mediators joining calls for President Slobodan Milosevic to abide by the results of local elections he lost, the citizens once again took to the streets of Belgrade in their many thousands. The Spanish chairman of the Organization for Cooperation and Security in Europe said the elections echoed the wishes of the majority of people and must be respected. It's a triumph for the opposition. If Milosevic recognize election results from November 17. We are ready to stop our protests. We are ready to start dialogue. President Milosevic responded though not with talk but with riot police. Many hundreds of them sent onto the streets to stop the protesters, to stop them it seems at almost any cost. 
but the people have demonstrated every day since the disputed elections. Today's events will only harden their resolve. Ben Ando, ITN. A French yachtsman was dramatically rescued by a British rival when his boat began to sink during fierce storms 1,200 miles off Western Australia. The two men were taking part in a round-the-world race when the French yacht ran into trouble. Neil Connery reports. At first light, the crew of the Australian Air Force Orion started scouring the seas. They picked up a signal from the sinking yacht's distress beacon 1,200 miles off Western Australia. Remarkably, in the freezing waters, they spotted Raphael Donelli's yacht. Standing on the upturned hull of the sinking ship, the Frenchman had spent hours struggling against hypothermia. The aircrew kicked two life rafts into the ocean, but the rough seas hampered Donelli's attempts to jump to safety. He was eventually picked up by British yachtsman Pete Goss. Goss had spent 10 years working for victory in this race, even selling his home to meet the costs of realising his dream. The judges say they'll compensate Goss for the time he's lost. Donnelly had coped well considering his ordeal. Uh, he was standing up at the doorway of the life raft and waving as we went past, so he looked to be fairly healthy. The two men are now heading for Hobart, a dramatic rescue in stormy seas behind them. Neil Connery, ITN. The Christmas sales were in full swing today. Some stores were predicting record sales as shoppers across the country queued to snap up cheap deals. But bargains abroad in the form of foreign holidays were also up for grabs. Helen Wright reports. They were queuing long before the doors opened at the new Harvey Nichols store in Leeds, eager to see just what bargains its first Christmas sale would offer. It's a suit with my name on it, sir. It's a coat with the wife's name on it, sir. <laughs> I'm after an evening dress and a suit to meet the Queen in February. The bitter cold meant the queues at this London department store were not as long as in past years. But as the clock struck nine, almost 200 eager shoppers raced through the doors. Managers say customers are spending more this year but want more for their money. They're buying much more considered purchase. They're buying, you know, they want a recommendation from the sales assistant. They want to know what they're buying. They want to make sure they're buying the right thing and not just spending money for nothing. Sale fever has also hit the travel market. With Christmas over, the major tour operators have now begun their battle for customers. Over recent years, a number of people have been leaving it until the last minute. And tour operators have tried to try and reverse that trend by offering a lot of incentives early on. And with most shops open all weekend and up to New Year, the spending spree looks set to continue into 1997. Helen Wright, ITN. Live now to a store in London's West End. Uh, Helen, you reported on the rush before Christmas. Are the sales uh, shaping up to be just as busy? Well, if anything, more so, John. As you can see here, some nine hours after the shop opened its doors, it's still packed. In fact, managers say the first day of the Christmas sales is traditionally the busiest day of the year for this store. They also say that the post-budget feel-good factor means people are spending more than ever. They saw that in the run-up to Christmas, and there's no sign of it stopping now. In fact, the forecast is that takings here today will be up some 10% on what they were last year. Now, Helen, we see sales all year round. Are these still special, these Christmas sales? Well, they're special for the, for the people who are here. The bargain hunters are out in force, but as you say, we have seven-day shopping, late-night shopping, so the sales aren't perhaps the highlight of the, the shopping calendar that they once were. Thank you, Helen. The hostage crisis of the Japanese ambassador's residence in Lima entered its 11th day today with no sign of an end in sight. Some of the released hostages say a number of those still being held are suffering serious health problems. From Lima, Howell Jones reports. 200 feet above the Japanese ambassador's residence in Lima, Manuel Savina watches and waits. For 10 days, his brother, a Supreme Court judge, has been held hostage. But I think they're going to, they're going to be there for a long time. Because I think this negotiation is going to take a long time. We have to put their act together, both parties, and uh, it's going to take time. The Japanese foreign minister, Yukahiko Okeda, wants help from his partners in the G7 group of industrialized nations, including Britain. Just what kind of help hasn't been decided. Earlier this year, the G7 nations agreed to take a common approach to tackling terrorism. This siege might prove to be the first real test of that new policy. 
The Tupac Amaru terrorists are defiant and heavily armed, but they seem to trust this man as a go-between, Bishop Juan Luis Cipriani. He's negotiated the release of two men in two days, but there are more than 100 others waiting for freedom. Howell Jones, ITN, Lima. Mandy Allwood, who earlier this year lost the eight babies she was expecting following fertility treatment, has been arrested. She was questioned by police in Solihull last week about alleged fraud offences. The offences are believed to relate to a loan. Thousands of car drivers will have to abandon their motorbikes in four days' time unless they're prepared to take a new test. A car driving test will no longer entitle people to ride low-powered motorbikes with L plates from January the 1st. And Prince Charles has been criticised by safety experts for ignoring basic rules during a shoot. He playfully cuffed Prince Harry while his son was holding a shotgun. Safety campaigners say the gun could easily have gone off. A tiny baby girl discovered in a hedge by a paperboy was today named Molly by nurses in Gateshead. Northumbria police are urgently trying to trace the baby's mother, who they say may need medical care. Chris Roberts reports. Warm and safe, but in the arms of a nurse, not her mother. Staff at Gateshead's Queen Elizabeth Hospital have named the tiny infant Molly. They hold no grudge towards the mother who abandoned her, just an offer of help. We're not about causing any trouble for Molly's mother. We just want to give her the help and support that any newly delivered mother requires at this time. Wrapped in a towel and sheets, Molly was found dumped in the snow on a northeast housing estate. She lay there crying in the freezing cold until rescued by Darren Sims, a 13-year-old paperboy doing his Boxing Day round. She wasn't hidden, so I would say they wanted somebody to find her, but at the same time, if she'd been there for a lot longer, she just wouldn't have been alive. While Molly recovers in the local maternity ward, doctors continue to appeal for her mother to get in touch, fearing she may need medical treatment as well. Chris Roberts, ITN. The weather may have provided England's cricketers with a chance to salvage their pride in the second test in Harare. The rain stopped Zimbabwe on 93 for two at the end of the second day, 63 runs behind England's first innings total. James Munro reports. John Crawley and Phil Tufnell held out for 10 overs this morning before Tufnell played onto a bouncer from heat streak. That left England all out for a miserable 156 with Crawley stranded on 47. Zimbabwe's batsman then proceeded to struggle as well. Alan Mullally offering hope with an early breakthrough. Mark Decker out for two. Alistair Campbell weighed in with some useful hits as he and Grant Flower stayed together until lunch before Campbell became Craig White's first victim of the tour. Zimbabwe then began to play with the patience which eluded England yesterday. This a rare boundary from David Houghton before the rain came down to give England an outside chance of salvaging a draw and saving the series. James Munro, ITN Sport. An apprentice jockey in Australia has given a whole new meaning to the expression a two-horse race. Andrew Payne started the race on one mount, but then events took a bizarre turn. James Britton takes up the story. 17 riders entered the final straight of the Caulfield Christmas handicap, but one jockey was determined to make it a two-horse race. And the rider of Hong Kwok Star was very lucky to stay on his feet in the straight. Not so much staying on his feet, but trading places. What the commentator had missed was this saddle-defying leap, catapulting jockey Andrew Payne into racing history. horses couldn't win him the $59,000 prize, but back in the paddock, owners and bookies agreed he'd beaten the odds. James Britton, ITN. The main news is that the family of one of the British nurses being held in Saudi Arabia have said they've spoken to her and she has protested her innocence. That's Friday's early evening news, late news tonight, 20 to 11. Till then, bye-bye.
snow in parts of the south this morning gave a festive look to things, but of course it leaves us with problems on the roads. You can see the weather front that produced it earlier today. It's moved away, but it's coming back again overnight tonight. Not this time, I think, much in the way of snow, but certainly a good deal of cloud and one or two light snow flurries. But the main feature on the charts, really not just for today and tonight, but through the weekend, will be the high pressure to the north. It's going to keep us generally dry and quite cold too. So for tonight, in more detail, central and western parts will be dry, clear and frosty. The east rather more cloudy at times, especially down the east coast where there'll be one or two light snow showers. And across the whole of southern Britain, really the clouds coming back again. And one or two light snow showers there too, but not amounting to very much. But still enough, I think, to dampen one or two of the roads that are already fairly near freezing. Temperatures themselves below freezing across many parts of Britain tonight. Even in the south where the cloud comes back, the temperature's close to freezing for a while, so take extra care on the roads. Now on to tomorrow. Well, the western side of Britain gets the best of the sunshine tomorrow, dry for most of the day. Eastern areas rather more cloudy, just one or two very light sleet or snow showers, not amounting to very much. In the south, after that rather grey start, we'll find the clouds breaking up there, so some sunny spells for the afternoon. Mind you, even with a good deal of sunshine, it's still going to be a cold day. Temperatures at best between around 2 and 5 degrees, and if you're out in that northeasterly breeze, it's going to feel bitterly cold tomorrow. Much of the same on Sunday too, a clear and frosty start. As we go through the day, clouds building up and some winter showers moving down from the north and east. But at least there's some sunshine, even though it's cold. Wrap up warm. Here's a summary. The power jam, generating electricity whatever the weather. The new Northumbrian water, serving the northeast. last on a sledge this morning enjoying a wee bit of snow that we had i think there's more snow on its way but mostly in the form of scattered showers if we look at the satellite picture well there's the overnight snow there clearing away and behind it there's quite nice clear areas but because the winds are in the northeast now we're going to get one or two snow showers coming in off the north sea a scattering of snow showers overnight tonight if you're out near the coast there even in as far as morpeth temperatures just staying above zero in the air, but you're almost likely to get a ground frost there. The coldest parts of the whole region out in the Pennine areas here, where you could get a snow shower and you could get temperatures down to minus two Celsius. Now, tomorrow, not a lot changes because this wind stays in the northeast. I think it's a question of a lot of bright weather around, a lot of sunshine around, but one or two wintry showers. Temperatures in the afternoon, strangely enough, like today, five Celsius for most of us. 41 Fahrenheit. We go on to Sunday, it stays very cold. Still some sunshine, still some wintry showers. Top temperatures for next week, cold. For a seven day regional forecast, call the Northeast Weather Line on 0336 405440. Once upon a time, there was a king and queen who gave birth to a daughter so pristine. Along came a wicked witch and cast a spell. On her 16th birthday, the princess fell. After pricking her finger at the wheel of a spindle, which caused the whole city to slowly dwindle. She was put to sleep for the rest of her life, until a good prince arrived and kissed the sleeping beauty and made her his wife. Disney's Sleeping Beauty, Sunday at 5.55 on Channel 3 Northeast. You're watching Time Tease Television on Channel 3 in the Northeast. Now, with the time at 6 o'clock, we join Mike Neville. Yes, hope you're enjoying Christmas. A rather special programme tonight. In half an hour, I'll be joined by two teams of celebrities here in Studio One for a seasonal look back at the lighter side of life here in the Northeast. Stay with us to see how much of 1996 you can remember with a festive.